Hi, I'm Kat Kennewell, part of the education team for Meet Edison. In this video, I'm going to show you two things. First, I'm going to explain how to download a program from one of the programming languages to your Edison robot. In the second half of this video, I'm going to explain what's actually going on when you download a program to Edison. Understanding what's actually happening can make it easier to remember the steps you need to take and to troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. There are three Edison robot programming languages, Edblocks, Edscratch, and Edpy. The steps you need to take to download a program are the same no matter which language you are using. In this video, I'll be using Edscratch. To download a program to your Edison robot, here's what you need to do. Connect your Edison to your computer using the Edcom cable. Press the round record button on Edison one time. Click the program button in the programming app. Make sure your volume is turned all the way up. When everything is ready, click program Edison in the pop-up. While your program is downloading, you'll hear a buzzing sound. Once it downloads correctly, you'll hear it make the success sound, which is the same happy chirp you hear when you first turn on Edison. Once you've heard the success sound, you can unplug Edison from the Edcom cable. To play the program you've just downloaded into your robot, press the play button, which is the triangle button, one time. And that's it! In this part of the video, I'm going to explain what is actually happening when you download a program to your robot. Downloading a program to your Edison robot will become second nature in no time, but when you're first starting out, it can feel like a lot to remember, especially if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. To help, I'm going to walk through the download, step by step, and explain what's going on. This can help you remember what you need to do. It can also give you some tips of things to look out for that might make a download fail. First, make sure your Edison is turned on. If your robot's not on, it can't receive any information, including a download. So this might seem simple, but it's actually really important. If your power switch is in the on position, but the red LEDs aren't flashing, then your robot's in sleep mode. It also can't receive a download while in sleep mode, so you'll need to wake it back up. To do that, flip the power switch from the on to the off position and then back on, or press the triangle button. The second thing to do is connect Edison and your programming device together using the Edcom cable. Now, the Edcom cable is really interesting, so it's worth taking a minute to see what it actually does. The cable has two ends, the end with the audio jack connector, which plugs into your computer or tablet, and the end that connects to your Edison robot. When you download a program from your computer to your Edison robot, it's sent as an audio file. That's the buzzing, crunchy noise you hear while the program is being downloaded. But look at where the Edcom cable actually connects to your Edison robot. When it's plugged in, the Edcom cable sits right on top of the line tracking sensor. The line tracking sensor has two parts, a red LED light and a light sensor. In your programs, you'll probably use the line tracking sensor to let Edison see the difference between light and dark colored surfaces. To do that, the sensor shines light from the red LED down onto the surface below Edison. The light sensor measures how much of that light is reflected back up to Edison. But when you download a program, only the light sensor is running, not the red LED. So where is the light coming from? It's coming from the Edcom cable. The end that attaches to Edison contains an infrared LED. The Edcom cable translates the audio file sent by your computer into light pulses that the Edison robot can read. Pretty amazing, right? So you can see the Edcom cable is really important and there are a few things you can do to help make sure it can do its job. First, make sure your volume is turned all the way up. It's best to double check your volume after you plug the Edcom cable in too. Some devices, especially on tablets, will automatically lower the volume when they detect something's been plugged in, so you want to make sure the volume is still at 100% once the Edcom cable is plugged into your device. You also want to make sure that the Edcom cable is the only audio out device you have connected to your computer or tablet. If you have another audio out device, like headphones, you're going to have two problems. First, the program won't go to Edison. And second, if you're the one wearing headphones, you're going to get a really loud surprise. 
Make sure you double check all audio out connections, including by Bluetooth or wirelessly. When you plug the Edcom cable into your computer or tablet, make sure it goes all the way into the audio port. This is especially important if you're using a tablet that has a cover on it, which can sometimes block the Edcom cable. The other end of the Edcom cable, the part that connects into Edison, doesn't have to be pushed in super tight. Just make sure that the two pegs slide into the two holes. But don't worry, these aren't the parts that are doing anything. They're just holding this end of the Edcom cable in place over the light sensor, because remember, that's how the program is sent to Edison. One more thing to note about the Edcom cable. When you plug the Edcom cable in on some devices, you'll get a pop-up asking you what kind of device you just plugged in. If you get this kind of a message, just select speakers out or headphones out. To get the program from the programming app into your Edison robot, several things have to happen. First, you need to tell Edison you want it to accept a download. You do this by pushing the round record button one time. Edison will beep and the two red LED lights will go solid. This lets you know that the robot is now ready to accept a program. Next, you need to tell the programming application that you want to send the program you've just created to Edison. You do this by pushing the Program Edison button in the upper right-hand corner of the programming application. When you push that button, your code is sent from the programming application to something called a compiler. The compiler changes the code that you see on your screen into a format that can be read by Edison. Basically, it changes your code into the audio file that will be sent down to your Edison robot. It can take a little bit of time for the compiler to do this conversion. That's why it can take a few seconds before the Program Edison button will show up in the pop-up you see in your programming app. Once the program is ready to be sent to your robot, the button will show up. Press it once, and the download will begin. Don't disconnect the robot or the Edcon cable until the program is fully downloaded and you hear the success beep. Remember, your program is sent as an audio file to your Edison robot. That's why it's so important to make sure your volume is turned all the way up. And it's really important to make sure the Edcon cable is the only audio out device you have connected to your computer or tablet. There's one other thing that can mess up the program download. That's noises from another place on your computer happening at the same time the download is going. So, for example, if you had a video running in another tab or some other program made an alert sound while your program was downloading, it can interrupt that download and cause the download to fail. If a program fails for any reason, you will hear the fail sound. If a download does fail, check for the things we've covered here. Make sure the volume is all the way up. Be sure there is no other audio playing anywhere on the computer and check that there are no other audio out devices, like headphones, connected to the computer, including by USB, Bluetooth, or wirelessly. If everything looks right, try again. Press the round button on Edison one time, press the Program Edison button in the programming app, and then when it's ready, press the Program Edison button on the pop-up. If a program fails a second time, you may need to change some of the settings in the programming app. Select the Help option from the menu in the programming app. There you can check your connection to the compiler and even change the output format that the compiler is going to send to better suit your computing device. There are step-by-step -step explanations inside the programming app menu to help you work through both of these steps. You can also find more troubleshooting help on the meetedison.com website. Once your program has downloaded successfully, you can run it in your robot. Unplug your robot from the Edcom cable. To play the program, you're going to press the triangle button one time. Now, as soon as you press that triangle button, your program will start to run. So you want to make sure you put your robot where you want it to be when you play your program before you press the triangle button. And there you have it. Now you know what happens when you download a program to your Edison robot. There's a lot more to learn and so much to do with Edison. Head to meetedison.com to learn more about Edison sensors, check out the different programming languages, and discover great activities and challenges to try.